Hey guys, so today I'm here to talk about one of the foundations of metal rhythm guitar playing, which is the chug. And more importantly, a little bit of the music science behind chugging, so you can make your riffs less boring and more awesome. This is Chug 101. Firstly, for the few of you who might not know, what is a chug? A chug, of course, it's a word, differs from person to person, but I'm going to use it to describe a chord. So that's going to be two or more notes that are played in the guitar using this palm muted fashion to gain this rhythmic quality. You'll recognize this sound and technique as the basis of a lot of metal rhythm guitar playing. That's why I'm focusing on it, because there's a lot about chugs that we take for granted and that we can be more creative about so we can better express ourselves musically. Between muting, picking, tone, mixing even, there's a lot that we can focus on on chugs, but I'm going to focus on one specific topic today. That's really the only topic that matters, and it's the notes that we're going to be playing. So we're going to have a little discussion about intervals. I'm going to be discussing two note chugs on the bottom two strings. So there's only going to be one interval for us to discuss today, and that's between the bottom string and the next string. So a very small primer on intervals in our Western music tradition. We divide the octave, which is the middle of the string where you find the same note at a higher frequency. We divide that into, as you know, 12 equal parts. And that's, as you know, our 12 musical notes. And because music is nothing but the relationship of these notes with each other, we give these relationships specific names so that we can refer to the intervals in between them. The more important and the smallest unit that we're going to be talking about is, of course, the semitone or half step. And it's how we're going to measure all other intervals. For example, this one is comprised of seven of those smallest semitones. We'll be getting there, but that's really the primer on intervals. All you need to know about an interval is that it's the distance between two notes counted by the semitone, the smallest unit. Of course, they have cute names that you might have heard, and I'll also be using the music theory names so that you can start to associate them with the semitone difference that they represent. So let's get into it. Let's imagine ourselves as metal guitar babies. When we first started playing, there were a few songs that we really wanted to get into. And if we paid close attention, we would notice that we find ourselves chugging the same pattern very often. And we really, really like this pattern. It sounds very, very heavy. We actually like it so much that we end up detuning our guitar so that we can form that interval relationship on open strings. And on all other notes, of course, with a simple bar chord. So what is this ubiquitous interval? This is the interval where the notes are seven semitones apart. And it's called the fifth, because if you count the notes, it's five notes in between the two notes. So D, E, F, G, A, five notes, it's a fifth. And here's the thing, it's a great choice for an interval. It sounds very, very good, and it's one of the more consonant intervals. We're going to be talking about consonants and dissonance a lot. So consonance means that an interval, because of physics, the two waves of the two notes that we pick align well together, and that creates this amplification of sound that sounds really loud and really heavy, and that, of course, we enjoy. The fifth is basically the most consonant interval that isn't the actual octave, so it's basically the best alternative to just playing one note. You add the fifth. It's like a harmonic continuation of the single note. And because of its simplicity, it really finds itself in a lot of guitar music. 
So you might see why we're here today. We're here to be more creative, find new sounds to try to express our music better. So we're going to talk about all the other intervals you can chug and play on rhythm guitar that aren't the fifth. We're going to be talking about intervals that are shorter than the fifth. We're going to talk about intervals that are wider than the fifth. So where the notes can come closer and can come further than that interval. There's a world of different sounds to discover here, and I'm going to show you what they sound like. I'm going to show you real song examples of them being applied, and I hope you get to apply them in your own riffs and be more creative and better express yourself. So let's go. So let's start talking about the intervals that are shorter than the fifth. There's a characteristic about them that makes them kind of unfit for rhythm guitar, but if you're a more creative composer, it could actually be exactly the thing you're looking for. And let me explain here. So simply put, an interval can be nicely consonant in a higher range, but when shifted to a lower range, that same interval can become dissonant. The main determiner of dissonance or consonance is obviously going to be your interval choice, but the octave also plays a part in that. And that's because, well, in physics, we were talking about intervals and wavelengths aligning. If the wavelength is longer, which is correspondent to a bassier note, that means you're going to take longer to hear the consonance because the wavelength is literally longer. And in a higher frequency, you get a lot of that alignment. And so it just sounds more consonant. This is not very important, but bear it in mind, because in rhythm guitar, we're always talking about low notes. So it's a little bit harder to achieve a consonant sound. Let's start with what's actually the least consonant sound of them all, which is the semitone as an interval, so the minor second. And it's very simple, you're just gonna play two notes that are one semitone apart. You know this sound in interval for sure, you might be more familiar with it on a higher range. But in a rhythm guitar context, because of what I explained earlier, it's actually even more dissonant because of that low note characteristic. So you should really take advantage of this extra aggression that this interval can bring. And I'm gonna show you an awesome example on a song called Blood Brothers by Ocean's 8 Alaska. As you can tell, that sounded sick and it really makes sense because uh, the song is, of course, very aggressive, and the theme about two brothers with a very dissonant relationship, for lack of a better word, it's very well used in this song. So there's a great example. Try it yourself and see what you can come up with. On the intervals after the semitone, those that are two, three, and four semitones apart, so the major second, minor third, and major third, is where, in my experience, there's a little bit of a gray area where there isn't a lot of examples of them being used in rhythm guitar. And in my opinion, this is because, again, they kind of constitute this gray area where you're not really at a very consonant interval, but it's, you can't call it really dissonant either. So people just ended up going for different, more obvious intervals. But again, that presents an opportunity for us because if we want to use this underutilized register, we can come up with an original sound that's our own. And of course, there's arguments with I just, which I just presented for it not being the best option. But then again, there were arguments that we shouldn't be distorting our guitar signal back in the day and look at us playing through all this gain. So here's something I come up with with these intervals and be sure to try them and see if you can come up with something that you love. So now we get to the first truly consonant interval below the fifth, and that is the fourth, where the notes are five semitones apart. And this one has a cool trick that lets you cheat and sound like you're using a lower tuning. I'll explain. Five. 
funny enough, one of the reasons it works so well, it's because it's an inverted fifth. So it always comes back to the damn fifth. But uh, here's the explanation. So if you are playing DNG, that is a fourth. One, two, three, four, DG. But if you put the D on the different octave, so G, D, now it's a fifth. So they're basically different versions of the same thing. And I'm going to explain how that sounds like you're cheating a lower tuning with this example from the latest Gojira single that I covered. So basically, Gojira is playing this riff in D standard, which is why I got the seventh string to explain to you that if you invert the high string to the bottom, They're basically playing a drop G riff in D standard because they invert the fifths to fourths. So that is a pretty, pretty cool trick. And uh, be sure to try it and see what you can come up with using fourths. This next interval you might be familiar with in metal, it's the diminished fifth where the notes are six semitones apart. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> And it's called the diminished fifth because it's just one note of the fifth diminished from seven semitones to six semitones. You might have also heard of it as the tritone because six semitones, half steps, is three whole steps. So three tones, tritone. And as you can tell, it's a very, very, very dissonant interval, especially with the low range characteristic that we're talking about. So again, like the minor second, use this to convey aggression and any kind of bad thing that you would like. It is often used, and instead of using the usual deathcore, metalcore example, where some songs can actually be wholly based on this interval, I'm gonna give you a creative modern new metal use of it in a song by Lotus Eater. So if you hear how they combine that interval with a spooky atmosphere and a fun melody that actually plays on those notes, you can really hear this new way to sound dissonant, express different facets, and it actually speaks volumes on why bands with this freshly dissonant sound like Lotus Cedar and Loath are really capturing a new generation of guitarists. So try it, see what you can come up with. So in order, we reach the fifth again, seven semitones. There's not much I can say that hasn't already been played. But I will add this. There is a reason why it's so used. It is an awesome interval and we should take advantage of it, especially not only because of the physics behind it, it just sounds good, but because of the social aspect where we have heard so many fifths around that it just sounds good to our ears because we're accustomed to it in normal music. So always take that into consideration. And even me trying to present to you all the different alternatives of intervals that you can chug, I will still base them around the fifth and it's gonna be most of what I use still. So keep using it. Now we're reaching a part I love, which are the wider intervals, where you're gonna be more than seven semitones away from each other. And I really like it because I explained to you that closer intervals on the lower range can sound a little bit dissonant. As you open that distance up, the notes become more clear within each other, and then the interpretation can either be more specific if you really drive it home, or you can leave it to more open ears. It's very cool and I'm gonna explain and I'm gonna start with the minor sixth. So above seven semitones, we have eight. You can hear how that sound can be like a little bit open to interpretation. That's why I like it so much. In my personal view, it kind of sounds a little bit melancholic and it could be a positive, like you're longing for something that you like, or you could just be 
uh, disappointed at something or you're missing something. Words are pretty stupid to describe this. That's why we love music. And I'm gonna show you an example of the architect single animals. Architects use this a lot. And by using the sixth, the main chord lacks this feeling of resolution. It makes it sound, again, more open. And here's a different example that I think is relevant from a breakdown by Void of Vision that I think if it was a fifth, it would absolutely lack the mystique it kind of has. I don't know, I just feel like that sound, it just makes you think a little bit more. It makes you ponder a little bit more. But then again, words are stupid. Go try it, give your fifths an extra semitone and see what that sounds like. Now, the major sixth, eight semitones, it can enter that gray area of the lower ones. Here's where I'm gonna really have to write the example that I have of a band that really pulls off this interval well in rhythm guitar, and that's Alpha Wolf. Check this out. <laughs> So you can clearly hear it there, like F to D, so F, G, A, B, C, D, that is six, so a major sixth. And it's a consequence of their tuning where they take drop G and they lower the string down to F, the low string, so you get that relationship of F to D. Let me do it too. And in my artistic subjective opinion, it kind of sounds a little bit ironic of an interval. Because if you try to put it within the usual major, minor, happy, sad space, especially in low rhythm guitar, it kind of doesn't fit anywhere. It just sits there and like laughs at you. And I think that's why Alpha Wolf pull it off so well, because it's so, it's so funky and unusual. When it's a song with this like diss track flavor about just not, not giving a shit about you or anything, the funky interval really, really helps pull that disdain out. Again, words are very, very stupid. And art is of course subjective. The idea is that you go try it out and see if you find something that you really, really like using. All right, back to drop G. <laughs> Okay, so the next interval is the minor seventh, which is 10 semitones apart, the two notes from each other. And this is actually, if you don't count the diminished fifth, one of the stronger alternative intervals in modern metal. In my opinion and experience, I usually see it used as a little bit of a more aggressive alternative to the fifth. That isn't really ugly sounding like the diminished fifth is. It also appears often as a consequence of this modern tuning where you um, drop the low string so that it forms this exact minor seven interval with the next string and they're 10 semitones apart and your chog, just like Alpha Wolf, Instead of becoming a major six, it becomes a minor seventh because they're 10 semitones apart. Here's an example of a band that does that, Wage War. And you could mistake those epic chugs for a fifth power chord, but I can tell that there's a little bit more edge in there and maybe you can too. And that's why I really think this interval sounds very cool and special when you chug it. And here's another example by Era where it's very cool, they switch in the same breakdown between using fifths and this seventh. So you're really gonna be able to tell the difference when they burst with the minor seven and when they're chugging the normal fifth power chord. Check it out. I really, really love that. And again, go try it for yourself. You might find this one to be one of the easier ones to get into. At last, we reach the interval right before the octave, which is the major seven, 
11 semitones of distance from the two notes. This is one of my favorites for sure, absolutely, because of how many contexts I can work it into. You'd expect the interval beneath the octave, right, one semitone beneath the octave to be a very dissonant one. And here's the thing, it is dissonant, but depending on the context that you put it in, you can fit it into an aggressive context as much as you can fit it into a pretty context. Here's an example of the bad context. Notice when it's this ridiculously low, right, because of that property that I mentioned earlier about lower octaves being even more dissonant, the interval is literally just being used for its dissonance. And consider, this is one of the heaviest breakdowns in Spirit Box discography, and Mike chose it amongst all other intervals, diminished fifths, minor seconds, thirds and sixths, he chose the major seventh. So think about how much that speaks to the dissonance of this interval. And then you might wonder how can we fit it into a prettier context when it actually can sound this nasty. Took the liberty of writing a little riff myself and I'm gonna show you the prettier context of the major seven in rhythm guitar. So that is the lesson guys. And now with this whole context of new intervals, new sounds that you're now aware of. I want you to go try them all and see how much better you can express yourself now that you know a few different sounds that you might use. If you write a riff using the knowledge you learned in this video, I would love for you to share it on Instagram and tag me because I really like seeing what you guys do with the knowledge of my more educational videos. It really warms my heart. Thank you all and I'll leave you with my positive interpretation of the major seven.